Hello my fellow whale watchers, this is a very short episode of Rush Hour, where I want to show you how you can sometimes get beacons by thinking out of the box and your knowledge of the mechanics of the game. This sequence allowed us to win a battle very fast against stronger opponents. We start with the Phantom and our goal here is to get the beacon furthest away from us, on the top right of the dam. Usually players of the opposite team don't go there directly because it's more convenient to go for center or the other home beacon. But if you watch my tactics videos, you already know a trick that often works on how to get there. We simply use a route that nobody expects you to take, and we just need a bit of good timing. So this route starts down here, in the trench, and when everybody is focused on center, we start our run. First close to the upper platform. and then crossing the open field, ending up on the beacon. Surprised? Well, try it out. It works more often than you think, simply because the reds don't expect this. So after we arrived, we managed to turn the beacon white, but just before a scorpion jumped in. We know that the Scorpion's ability allows it to jump behind opponents, right? So I position myself in a way that when he uses its ability, he will end up outside of the beacon circle. This will allow me to continue to turn the beacon blue. So finally the Scorpion indeed jumps on us and brings down our health quite a bit. We just don't manage to turn it completely blue as he pushes into the beacon circle, but then he teleports back down, which was a big mistake that will decide the battle now. Why is that? Well, it's worth at this point to try to understand the situation that we are in. The Scorpion is almost full on health and we lost quite a lot of health, but actually we are in a position of strength here, although it is not obvious at the first glance. Think about it. What we basically want is to turn this beacon blue. This would allow us and our team to jump in here. If we stay here on top of the white beacon in the corner, the Scorpion has three choices. The first choice is that he stays where he is. This means he will not be able to hit us. But as long as nothing changes or nobody comes to help, the beacon will stay white. In general, that's better for us than for him, because we blocked the right home beacon. So he will not be comfortable with this situation. The second choice is that he waits for his ability and then jumps on us again. But if we stay disciplined and don't move from our position, he will end up behind us again, outside of the beacon circle. And these couple of seconds will be enough for us to turn the beacon blue. The third choice is that he walks out of the beacon circle until he reaches a position where he can hit us, but that by default turns the beacon blue too, so in fact there are no good choices for this scorpion here. So knowing that, I start to corner shoot it a bit using elevation while staying on the beacon circle all the time, and the plan was that just before he gets his ability back, I will simply walk back where I came from and force him to teleport behind me, because I'm in a position of strength here, remember? And then the scorpion does something unexpected, because there was a fourth choice as well. That was just possible because of the specific setup that the scorpion runs, because he had the jumping unit equipped as active module. I did not expect it, but okay, if he had executed his jump in a very precise fashion by staying inside of the beacon circle all the time, he could have killed us and avoided to turn the beacon blue. But he did not. He lands outside of the circle and the beacon turns blue. Great try buddy, that was actually your best shot if it worked, but it did not. So he kills us now of course, but a teammate will jump in and I get into my Ravana, which is a great scorpion counter. And together we manage to bring the scorpion down and turn the beacon back to blue. This won us the battle in the end. So I hope that this analysis of this very short sequence actually showed you that you can win battles simply by understanding the game mechanics. In this situation I calculated a path to the beacon, I turn it white, by understanding my opponent and his limitations, I managed to turn it blue, and finally, together with team support, we could get our opponent out of the way and decide this battle for our team. So in short, always try to understand the situation that you're in and act accordingly. Your team will thank you for your awareness and your educated decision making. Thanks for watching this episode of Rush Hour and see you on my channel.